Hello friends and welcome to another week in the fitness world that is still trying to talk nonsense to you as every day we take a step closer to death. What? So we shall continue our love for Arnold Schwarzenegger on these videos, although today I do have to ask, what the flub are we talking about? So if I show you this picture, and this picture, and this picture, we can look at Arnie's physique and look at his biceps and his triceps and his shoulders and pectorials before our eyes glance towards his abdominal muscles and we go mad. Look at those wonderful slabs, it makes me want to lick them. Don't do it. Today though, the world has decided this isn't true. You tell me. It does come straight from Reddit though, and user Flares117 who said, Today I learned the amount of abs you can attain is purely determined by genetics. While six packs are the most common, some bodybuilders such as Schwarzenegger can only attain a four pack. This is due to humans being born with different amounts of fascia bands. The most you can have is a 10 pack, which is rare. Now I probably pronounced a lot of words in that wrong because I am an idiot and I'm sure the science is sound. In fact it is, I looked it up and I read about it. But I don't think that we should be getting into a place where you're telling people, hey, you see that Arnold, he only had a four pack, he couldn't have a six pack. Let's talk about it as if it's something negative. I mean, if we are starting to downplay Arnie's abs, which sounds like the name of a very good television show that I would watch, you are just gonna send some people crazy. And the message should always be, the bodies are weird, and genetics are weird, and humans are weird. So even if you've got a one and a half pack, you are totally smashing it. Because if you can see any amount of your abs, your body fat is heading in the right direction. Because let's face it, if even Arnie isn't living up to expectations, we're all gonna be crying into our protein shakes. Although it will not be a protein shake, because we will have moved it out the way and we'll be crying into a slab of cheese because when we do become sad pandas we all like to go and eat cheese it just means that we will go nuts and throw our diets out the window and speaking of nuts look at this this is rowan o'malley a 10 year old bodybuilder which means the headline of this story is Children are kicking our ass. Dubbed Britain's strongest boy because nobody has any imagination. His lifting records at the moment are a 127.5 deadlift, a 100 kilogram squat, and a 57.5 kilogram bench press. I mean, that is flubbing ridiculous. He also eats around about 3,000 calories a day and walks the usual line in the sense he's eating eggs, steak, and fish. Although his mum has also said he likes to eat like a child. And I put my hand up and I said, yes, that's because he is one. I shouldn't have done it because there was nobody here. He also appeared on English television show this morning the other day where he did indeed pick up a sofa or a couch that had a man on it. It doesn't really tie in. I just wanted to unline how ridiculous English TV is. Amazingly too, he got into this because his parents were into fitness and they ran a bunch of fitness competitions. And you know how children are. They see adults doing something. They're like, oh man, I want to do it too. I mean, that's how I got into lifting weights. I had a friend that was a few years older than me and he stuck me into an 18 only gym. I was over the flipping moon. Roman has also entered and won competitions and he plans to go into more official ones when he's 12 year old and legally allowed to. And of course, there'll be some people out there now shouting, oh, this isn't very good for his health. One, nobody actually knows that for sure. And two, don't pretend if you've had a kid or you want a kid, you wouldn't want your child to do this. We all would because we're all muscle obsessed idiots. Which does bring us back to diet guru Michael Mosley. I do not understand how he's got on these videos twice. Now it is mostly due to this blog he wrote recently because as ever, he has jumped into this debate about whether doing cardio is good for losing weight. Now I do understand the criticisms here. What people are now saying is you don't have to do hours upon hours and hours of cardio because when most human beings do do this, what they do right afterwards to reward themselves is they go and eat a bunch of junk food and that is like two plus two equals potato. You've just wound back at the start of your journey. We also all think that going for a run or getting on a bike burns way more calories than it actually does. And also on the flip side to that, we don't actually understand how much calories are in what we are known as junk food. I mean, have you ever looked up a donut? It will make water come out of your face because that is totally unfair. My issue is that Mr. Mosley will then tell you where you should definitely do high intensity interval training or HIIT training because studies and research have shown that if you do do that, it is better for fat loss and it's better for weight loss and it's better for you. He also said there is some science to suggest that it will suppress the appetite, but come on now, that's not taking humans at face value. Nobody eats because they're hungry. People eat 
because it's the best thing to do on the planet. My main concern with any article or video like this is it is essentially telling you don't do a form of exercise and I am never going to pass those words into your ears because I think no matter what you want to do, as long as you're moving around, that's what you should do. For example, I do steady state cardio every day, but if somebody knocked on my door right now and said, oh, hi, Simon, you now have to do HIIT training, I'd be like, well, no, I'm not going to because I don't want to. And to finish on a positive, Mr. Mosey also said that most people do think, well, the more cardio I can do, the more food I can eat, and no, once again, you have to throw everything into the boot of your car. So you need to be doing exercise and you need to make sure that your diet is on point. This is the way to lose fat. This is the way to lose weight. There's no magic trick or one-stop shop. You have to put everything into a bucket and make sure that over the span of your lifetime, you are eating in moderation and keeping things balanced. Also, no one should ever tell you not to do cardio. You want to know why? It's good for your heart. So sadly, that is life. But what is not life is somebody telling you to eat a curry to lose weight. As ever, this comes from an article that quotes fabled researchers, which is never backed up. And yes, it's because the spice cardamom, which can feature in Indian cuisine, can burn fat because it regulates how fat is broken down. Flub off. Because even if this is true, if you then decide, oh, well, well, I'm going to start having five curries a day, which is probably well over 5,000 calories, do you think some magical spice, some magical dust is all of a sudden going to tell your body, oh, I know he's consuming loads of fat right now, but just ignore that and make sure we burn it. No, this absolute spice is going to get crushed by everything else and you are going to be overweight. Those are the facts. But if it was true, bodybuilders would be consuming this stuff like it was going out of fashion. And once again, this just sends the wrong message. It's basically telling you, tee hee, curry is a bad food. There is no such thing as bad food. There's only bad portions. So if once a week you want to have a curry, just eat the curry and make sure you regulate the rest of your food throughout the day. It really can be that simple. Which of course means we'll now end with Madonna. You didn't see that coming. <laughs> a new fitness challenge that has become popular on TikTok because it's always TikTok and features the queen of pop at the end of her 2001 tour when in time to the music she did 15 squats really really quickly in time to the music. Now to be fair if you have just been running around singing you're able to bust this out it is very impressive and actually when you try it if you want to try and keep up with Madonna well I'll be the first to tell you it's really really hard. Watch. Come on, Madonna let's go. One, two, three. Ah! Damn you, Madonna. Damn you. I do want to point out this is just a fitness challenge, and if you're using it to try and get in shape, you absolutely need to do more than 15 squats. I mean, that's the equivalent of dropping a pen, trying to pick it up, and just failing over and over again. But I do like stuff like this. I actually think it shows people that fitness can be fun. <laughs> which is the most old man thing I'll say today. Also, it'd be great to hear your opinions on these stories too, so please do drop a comment below, like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Click the bell, ding, ding, to be part of the notification crew, and there'll be another one of these fitness companions right there. Please do give it a click. You can also go to gorillamind.com, for us Simon, who's going to get 10% off. These are supplements I use, because I do think they're really, really good. I'm on Instagram and Twitter, or X, at Simon316, patreon.com, for us Simon316. On Cameo, personalized video messages, just search for Simon Miller, and go to Pro Wrestling Tees and Samson Athletics for my merch merchandise. Otherwise, if you are going to the gym today, no, you can do whatever you want in there. You have a good workout, great. You had a bad workout, at least you went. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. Goodbye.